Thank you very much. Well, um, as we all know, uh, Charles I's favourite painter was Titian, or we assume we know, and there are plenty, plenty of good reasons why um, he should have why he should have been. Um, he had more um, more paintings by Titian in his collection than by any other old master. I'm not talking about you know Rubens and Van Dyck, but any old master. Uh, Titian had no no doubt been a revelation to him when he went to the court of Madrid in 1623, uh, which of course was uh, the best collection and. Uh, uh, in the world of the works of Titian and the Prado Silis uh, today. This opened his eyes to the uh, magnificence of, uh, of collecting. And, of course, too, Titian was uh, the prince of painters and painter of princes and uh, provided uh, definitive uh, images of uh, royal dignity, as one can see uh, very clearly here in the uh, paint in the uh, the work in the uh, the exhibition of his uh, namesake, the Emperor, the Emperor Charles V. Heavens, a little bit. <laughs> something something Freudian going on there. Yes, uh, Charles V, of course. Um, and we can uh, we can also remember the. Um, uh, advice given by Arundel to uh, Petty, you do very well to be careful of getting something of Titian for his majesty. So you know, that, that uh, implies that anything by, uh, uh, by Titian would have, uh, would have pleased Charles uh, very much indeed. Now I'm just going through all this because uh, there is in fact no contemporary record of Charles actually expressing a particular love uh, of Titian. And um, I think I'm right in saying, although I'm a bit of a stranger in this paradise, uh, but um, the, the, the number of records of Charles's aesthetic, particular aesthetic tastes are rather, uh, are rather rare, uh, as opposed to his general desire to uh, accumulate a large collection by, uh, uh, by famous uh, names. And I think his, his uh, taste has to be um, inferred from his actions. Uh, particularly on about works of art that he didn't like, and uh, we uh, uh, we infer that he didn't care uh, so much for Northern European painting by the fact that uh, he um, deaccessioned uh, Holbein's and uh, Gert and Tots and Jans and this sort of thing. Now, one of the very rare instances of an explicit reference to uh, Charles's taste is. Um, a letter of May 1637, this is really quite a, 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 quite a well-known uh, document, um, uh, from the British ambassador in Venice, Basil Fielding, about whom we've already heard something, uh, to his brother-in-law, the, Mar the Marquis of Hamilton. And I'll just uh, quote this letter. I have seen four large pieces by Veronese which will hardly be bought for 1,300 ducats, but they are in his best manner though I hear he is not very acceptable to the king and therefore not much esteemed by your lordship. Um, this is the letter uh, published in uh, 1986 by uh, Paul Shakeshaft, and since then um, the best authorities have taken this passage at uh, face value that Charles simply didn't like Veronese. But this would really be rather surprising um, given uh, 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 the fact that you know, we're agreed, we agreed that he greatly admired uh, Titian and Veronese also painted uh, stately portraits and uh, erotic mythologies and poetic landscapes and also employed a very uh, rich Venetian palette and expressive brushwork and so on. He, he was an artist very deeply indebted to Titian. So in this paper I would like to uh, question this uh, now uh, common assumption that, uh, that Charles didn't care for Veronese by, first of all, looking at uh, those works uh, by Veronese that Charles owned, and secondly, by um, looking at the wider context of Fielding's uh, letter. 
Now, admittedly, there weren't very many Veroneses in, the, um, uh, in, uh, in Charles's uh, collection, especially compared with the you know, large numbers by, by Titian and, uh, and, and the modernists, or, or even in Tintoretto, actually. Um, and unfortunately, two on the list, the, uh, the first two, uh, which we know, uh, the first only uh, from the Van der Doort uh, inventory and the second uh, from the inventory and the Commonwealth sale, um, uh, they disappeared. We don't know what they were. We don't even know that they were by Veronese. So we're left with, uh, we're left with three. A small number, um, but um, there is a very good reason why uh, there's, a, uh, um, there's a small number, because um, Veronese, unlike Titian, hadn't worked for the Gonzaga uh, court. So no large group of paintings by Veronese arrived as part of a, uh, a block purchase. And the, the, these three, uh, th uh, numbers three, four, and five, were all um, uh, acquired individually. So I'll just uh, look at uh, three of these in, in turn, uh, starting with the painting from uh, Edinburgh, which is in the exhibition, of course. One of a handful of works uh, given to Charles when he was um, in Madrid, together with the, uh, Charles V with a hound, and, um, and uh, this, uh, this tissue, which, however, I think he bought. I think, it, I think that wasn't a gift. The, um, the Edinburgh picture was from the collection of the deceased favourite of Philip III, the Duke of Lerma, and there is good evidence that um, Charles uh, selected from the, this collection uh, the works he wanted. So um, we might uh, ask ourselves why. Well, uh, um, uh, a nice erotic subject matter for a start, and um, dazzling textures. Um, of course, there's an, this, uh, this painting has a, 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 another wonderful aspect, which is its uh, wit, very characteristic of Veronese, uh, that uh, the lovers are sort of uh, interrupted, and uh, Mars looks uh, extremely irritated at this development, where it, because uh, <coughs> Venus is distracted by the goings-on at her... Um, uh, at her feet when uh, this little dog is uh, mounting uh, Cupid and sort of a, an amusing uh, sort of, you know, a commentary on it. And uh, actually, uh, Gerbier has uh, quite an amusing uh, discussion of this. Although Charles, I don't think this is particularly what Charles, uh, Charles is not a character one associates as, as, you know, with having a great sense of humour. And probably <laughs> this is not, this is not the, the aspect that appealed to him most. Anyway, he chose it. Next, my next example, the Leda in Ayacho, um, which had um, previously belonged to uh, Buckingham, and I don't know where it came from, and I, perhaps uh, Maria Cristina could, tell, could uh, speculate afterwards how, how Buckingham got this. Anyway, the, this was acquired by uh, Charles from, his, uh, from Buckingham's widow in exchange for a religious picture by uh, Fetty, which is still in the, uh, in the royal collection even more erotic this time, in fact, quite lewd. Um, so we've got two erotic pictures, and this, this, you know, this, may, this may have been as important as the authorship, but I don't think he would have chosen it just for that reason if he, if he had actively uh, disliked the painter. And this doesn't apply at all in the, uh, in the, third, in the third case. Um, there was no reason for Charles to acquire this picture except for the fact that it's extremely beautiful. Uh, it is um, blown up much too large here. It is uh, uh, an exquisite little work, but then everybody will have seen it recently when it was in London for the Veronese exhibition. It's a magical sort of shimmer of the uh, fabrics and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, and the landscape. Uh, this appears in the Van der Doort inventory, where it is recorded that it was bought from Daniel Nice in Venice. Now, Nice is, of course, very well known as the broker of the uh, Mantua sale, but the <laughs> Gonzaga pictures, I think, are... Well, royal collection experts will have to advise me on this, but they're fairly consistently described as uh, Mantua pieces, not as pictures acquired from Daniel Nice. And so I, I think it's almost certain that uh, this was acquired from uh, Nice under a separate, under a separate deal. Uh, we don't know the circumstances. 
perhaps it'd be nice to think that Nice knew something about uh, Charles's refined taste, or uh, maybe even he'd been um, instructed to look out for a painting by Veronese. Um, in this respect, I suppose we could look back to the um, to the paper this morning by uh, Andrea, where uh, which mentioned the possibility that uh, Charles was actually looking to uh, plug gaps in his collection, and uh, so he could have um, he 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 might have wanted uh, a Veronese for the for reasons of uh, uh, of comprehensiveness. But anyway, um, what we know from these, these three uh, paintings I've been looking at is that um, they don't support um, the idea that, um, that Charles didn't care for Veronese. Well then, what about the, uh, the fielding letter which, which, uh, uh, which implied that uh, Veronese was an artist uh, not acceptable to the king? By Six, by 1637, um, Fielding was busy looking out pictures for his brother-in-law uh, Hamilton, who uh, I think it's right. I think I'm right in saying, I've, although this is this is the sort of idea that uh, uh, that may be contested by recent scholarship, but um, uh, my understanding is that uh, Hamilton was collecting with the idea of passing on his, uh, his collection to Charles or any way of offering Charles his uh, choice pieces. So he did want to, he did want to buy paintings that, uh, that Charles uh, would like. So he's not, uh, so he, I, I think what I'm saying is that he's, um, 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 he's uh, not uh, such a free spirit in this respect as uh, Buckingham uh, and, uh, and Arundel had been uh, a bit earlier. Now, in the previous year, March 1636, Fielding had sent to Hamilton this picture. Um, now in Uffizi, it, it was one of the paintings uh, deaccessioned by the Vienna Museum in the early 19th century, or rather, it was part of an exchange. Uh, so it ended up in, uh, no, rather oddly, in the Uffizi. And it's um, generally uh, conceded to be a, uh, a workshop picture only. It's, it's full of all the usual uh, you know, Veronese uh, accessories, except it's really not quite so good as a real, uh, as a real, uh, as a real Veronese. It's uh, relatively weak. Now, I'm suggesting now that uh, Hamilton had... Uh, shown this to uh, Charles, who at this date was uh, uh, a very refined connoisseur, and, um, and perhaps Charles was underwhelmed. Perhaps Charles thought that this was actually not a very good picture, and, um, um, uh, and he, didn't, uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't want it, or he didn't even want to uh, pretend to admire it. And certainly it's weaker than Charles' own Veronese, and it's also weaker than... Um, at least uh, several of the Veroneses that had reached uh, London by this date. Here, here is, uh, we've seen this this morning, one of the uh, Veroneses um, uh, owned by the Duke of Buckingham, bought, bought as a, uh, with a batch of 10 others by, uh, by Gerbier for, for him in, uh, in 1619. This was also in London recently, and uh, it's, a, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a wonder, it's a wonderful picture. And, um, bu and uh, Buckingham had a good uh, 20 pictures by, uh, uh, by Veronese at, uh, at York House. So this, I think this is quite comparable to uh, the Esther we've just been looking at, large-scale, multi-figured, but better. Uh, and Arundel also had at least uh, 15 Veroneses, although his 1655 inventory makes some of these quite difficult to um, identify, but um, he, he certainly owned, the, owned, these, uh, owned these two uh, paintings, although I've, um, I've recently um, discovered, or think I have, that uh, these were actually acquired by uh, Arundel right at the end of his life when he was in uh, Padua in, uh, in exile and, and so perhaps they never were uh, in London at, uh, you know, at Arundel House. But anyway, Arundel certainly had um, uh, uh, paintings attributed to, um, 
uh, to Veronese. And altogether, I've calculated about um, 60 paintings by Veronese arrived in um, London during the reigns of uh, James I and, uh, uh, and, Charles, uh, and Charles I. Um, and so I think there's every reason to suppose that he, that, um, uh, that Charles would have uh, admired um, uh, you know, Veronese, um, perhaps not quite as much as Titian, but almost as, uh, uh, as much, and that he knew a relatively poor example when he saw one. Thank you. Thank you.